Good morning and welcome back to the Beehive Buzz. It is June, help, June 13th, I think. Tuesday, June 13th-ish. And we are on our first camping trip for the season. As you can see, I am very bundled up because when we got up this morning, it was 50 degrees and that was at 7.30. So it got pretty cold last night. Thankfully in the camper, ta-da, there's the camper. Um, it stayed about 55, 56 when I could see this morning. Of course, we were all under covers and bundled up, so we were fine. That was no problem. So, yeah, you can see we've got our little campsite set up, our uh, screened in, I call it my screened in porch. <laughs> I'm not sure what we, it's just a screened in canopy. canopy. And we've got our coffee station going on right here because we both had, both on our second cups of coffee. Isaac's sitting inside because that crazy kid he came out in shorts and like no fleece on or anything i'm like well go put pants on and he just said i think i'll just go drink my coffee inside so we do have a fire going which is burning down so that we can start our breakfast here pretty soon we're going to be doing bacon and eggs um, we're enjoying the day we have some blue skies finally <clears throat> yesterday well we pulled in sunday around 5 30 or so and set everything up and it was just starting to get rainy and yesterday monday it rained all day i'll just say all day at one point it looked like the sun was going to come out and the boys went out biking and then all of a sudden i hear them coming down our little road here ah it just started opening it up and just dumping rain on them so <laughs> it was like yeah so much for that but today looks like it's going to be beautiful i think it's supposed to hit 70 today um once we get past the chilly morning where our campsite is it's pretty sheltered with the trees so we won't get the sun until much later in the morning but i can see it around the edges and by the creek which i'll do a little tour of our area later so yeah we are just enjoying resting up from the wedding the wedding yes that's all you guys have been hearing about for months is the wedding went beautifully it was just a very tiring week with the rehearsal dinner and last minute stuff and um we were so tired we were actually starting to feel sick and i crashed and burned thankfully we both didn't crash and burn at the same time my husband crashed and burned first so saturday when we we're doing the last of the prep i was dragging my sorry self through the rest of the prep but i was okay because i was kind of still on an adrenaline rush from um knowing that we had to leave on sunday and then sunday i think I just, during church, all of a sudden I was like, I am so done. I just can't even, like so tired that I just wanted to cry. So we made it here. And yesterday, I'm glad it was rainy because it was, to get, I had no motivation to do anything. And the rain was a perfect excuse to just snuggle up in the camper. And I just read a lot. I took two naps yesterday, two decent sized naps, I think. And still by 9 30 i was like ready to go to bed so that just shows to this morning i'm feeling a lot perkier feeling a lot more human um looking forward to going for a bike ride or bike rides later depending on what we do um, it's not really warm enough to go swimming but we'll probably go visit the lake at some point this week i think we are getting off and on rain this week but today looks like it's going to be gorgeous and it won't be like it was yesterday we haven't even done s'mores yet we've been cooking under the awning with our little camping stove because it's just it's just too rainy um but this morning believe it or not is the first morning that we've had a campfire uh it's just too rainy it was just too rainy we just couldn't do it so um yeah so oddly enough breakfast is our first campfire which means that tonight there will be s'mores so yeah all is well here um I'll, anything of interest happens i will fill you in i will insert some pictures of the dress the dress i made for the wedding which my husband kept saying you're crazy you're crazy don't you have enough to do while you're making a dress <laughs> so he pretty much kept saying that i intended to get it done before i got done working at school so the weeks leading up to memorial day weekend my goal was to have the dress done because i knew the week wedding week would be crazy busy but it seemed like all the pockets of time I had were quickly filled up with, oh, we're going to help Caleb move, or we got to do this, or we got to do that, we got to go. And there was stuff that took chunks of time, not just like, okay, this is going to take an hour and then I can get back to sewing. It was always something that was like, this is going to be a whole day's worth of work or helping finishing touches on um, like the favors and whatnot. I mean, it all happened, but it was just like, I think I underestimated 
um, how much there was left to do that last week. So everything got done. The wedding was beautiful. It was it was a simple ceremony, but it was just beautiful. So I'm going to go enjoy this fire and go dig out the bacon from our very full refrigerator. And I'll catch you later. So this is our friendly little creek. One year we came, there was so much rain that the water was pretty much up to this root right here. So that was a lot of water. It's pretty early, so I'm trying to whisper. It goes quite a ways, of course, it's a stream, it's going to go quite a ways. It is really foggy out this morning, as you can see. Uh, right over here, very foggy. I don't want to show you too much because there are children on the campground, so I can't really show you too much. But this this side, nobody came in. On the other side of me, looks like a couple of generations of a family ended up renting lots together, and it's really cute with all the little kids and all the family stuff. It's really nice. We hope to do that someday with our kids and our future grandchildren. Unfortunately, some of our kids don't like camping. <laughs> That's okay. And here's our setup. Bikes. That's our SUV. As you can see, this over here, that pop-up, that is not ours. That's how close things are right now. Um, we've got camper pop-ups after pop-up, other campers, a lot of tents. It's all good. I think people should be out enjoying nature, for sure. Love kayaks, it looks like people are gonna be going kayaking and trailblazing and stuff today. Um, my husband doesn't do water things, so we don't, basically if we go to the lake, we go swimming, but it's been way too cold to go swimming this week. So yeah, there's our setup. I guess it, oh, a lot of dogs too which again, doesn't bother me, it's fine. So we've gotten so much rain, you can see the mud splattered on everything. That's gonna be fun to pack up today. Um, this mat has been a wonderful thing. We bought it, right after we bought the camper, I got it. And no, actually I got it before, I got it to go with the tent and we have, used it quite a bit it's awesome gives you a place to land before going into the camper or the tent um, and with the awning it's like a nice little area to just sit when it's kind of yucky out we do have the screened in tent which we haven't spent a whole lot of time under this trip we've either been at the fire when it's been nice or under the awning or inside <laughs> we're walking around right we rode our bikes quite a bit on the nicer days tried out the new trails which were awesome and this little table was our cooking area for a long time. Um, we would put our food stuff to prep here when we were tenting. And this year we graduated up to this folding table because I kept telling Dale, I said, I really want a folding table right outside the door. It just seems like I'm always looking for that space. So this year that was our big investment for our camping stuff. This grill we've had, I mean, this stove we've had since day one of our camping excursion over eight years ago. Um, when we were tenting, used it quite a bit. We tend to cook over the fire still, but uh, we have used the inside stove a bit this time for heating up water. We cooked an easy supper on it one night. It's just got so raw and so damp that... We just we kind of just hold up and said, okay, we'll just ride this out. And it was fine because that's what this week was for. It wasn't for trying to be the survival of the fittest or anything like that. I'm sorry if it's hard to hear me. I, like I said, this pop-up behind me is right behind me, so I'm trying not to talk. 
Um, this is my coffee kit. I've got grounds in it. It says, school snacks only. The story behind that is back when all my kids were in school, we were, when I was, uh, at one point we had all seven of them in a private Christian school, the same one that I work at, but it was under different administration, different curriculum. We ended up leaving to go back to homeschooling. It's a long story. So the kids would come home hungry from all the activities and learning, and they would go through all the snacks. And the next day we'd be packing lunches, and it's like, where are their school snacks? So I finally divided all the snacks up. I'd put enough in here for the week for the school, for snack time and school lunches. And then the rest of the snacks, I would say, okay, this has to last until this and such day, because that's when I'm going grocery shopping again. But you can't take them out of here unless it's for school. So um, that worked with varying degrees of success. But basically I have uh, paper towels. Um, this is spray stuff for the griddle, because when we are cook when we're drinking our coffee, a lot of times we'll start baking or something on the griddle. We've got creamer and sugar. Um, my husband likes the powdered creamer, and I like just plain old milk and sugar. I have hand sanitizer here because um, when we were tenting, we were always had hand sanitizer everywhere just because it was easier. Um, of course, coffee filters. And the main star of the show, coffee. So, oh, <laughs> this is just, I'm not sure why this is still in here. Clear anti-itch lotion. Uh, my husband is prone to <sighs> poison ivy, so that's always kicking around somewhere. Of course, our handy dandy biter. So that's our coffee station. So we're going to have some coffee and then get the process started. Oh, here's a product everyone should have if you're camping. These, the Of Gloves, these are so good. If you've never used these, if you're cooking over a fire, these are a necessity. Um, they're flame proof, pretty much. <laughs> um, they're either plain or so retardant that you don't feel it. I mean, you can't stick your hand in the fire and leave it there. But if you're working around that really hot, 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 if a flame licks them just real quick, it won't hurt them. Um, these have been used quite a bit, so I'm not sure how much I would trust them with flames, but they are super insulated. And like if you have to take a hot grill off the fire for it to cool so you can wash it, this is what you use. I use it to pour coffee and tea from there. It's a little overkill for that. Um, but yeah, and that is my <laughs> paper towel from wiping things down earlier because the stuff is a little damp. So yes, sad day is departure day and we have to get some caffeine in us and then we are going to start breaking down camp, getting organized, hooking up and getting out of here. We have to dump the tanks. And then it's about an hour and a half home, which isn't too bad. That's about all our old car can handle with a camper, so that's okay. Next year we'll have a newer vehicle because we know for a fact that the SUV will not pass inspection again. Not because the engine isn't solid, but Pennsylvania is particular about their laws about rust. So we're definitely going to have to... It's not very rusty, obviously rusty, but the rocker panels... The rocker panels are pretty bad, I guess, or getting bad enough that our mechanic said that's not going to do. So we have until January, and that's after my husband's busy time. So even if we don't find anything right then, we can get by on just his car until we find something. So, of course, the camper will have for a few more years. We are planning on getting a smaller one at some point, but we'll keep this for a couple of years. So... Oh, I see steam. Yay. Okay, so we're back in the beehive. Um, I think the last thing I showed you was some camping stuff. So uh, now I'm just going to show you some sewing stuff. <laughs> so we've been back for six days. And um, as you know, families can just make life busy. So we've had a lot of stuff going on. Um, 
my one of my sons that lives at home, uh, he had a car emergency the other day. He's fine. It wasn't an accident. It was just a bizarre mechanical thing. So we've been helping him deal with that, although he's been doing well dealing with it on his own. Um, the newlyweds, my son and his wife, came over uh, and stayed overnight Monday night because, long story short, we had her car. Um, they took my son's car for their honeymoon and then a few days after they got back from their honeymoon, they made a trip back to our area to get her car. And I said, why don't you just stay for supper and stay overnight because it's like a three and a half hour drive back to where they live. So they did. And we had a wonderful time playing games and just uh, visiting. So it was fun. They told us about their adventures on their honeymoon and um, it was really cute. And uh, the, my son bought me a cute little um, figurine at the aquarium. They went to North Carolina. And I mean, I'm sorry, they went to, yeah, North Carolina. <clears throat> anyway, it, uh, it's really cute. She's, I have her on my sewing machine and I'll just pop a picture of that in here. So the, the joke with the mermaids, it isn't really a joke. It's just a motif that goes through, weaves in and out of my family. Um, we all love to swim, us gals. So I grew up in the water and my stepmother as well loves to swim. She swims every day for a couple hours as it is. Uh, she lives in Florida. So yeah, she gets to go swimming. They have a pool. So it's, it's something that's very easy for her. It's good for her. Uh, she's older, so it's really easy on her joints and stuff. And I told my husband, I said, you know, if we ever move to a warmer climate, the requirement is I have to have a lanai or a porch and I have to have a pool. I'm not cheap to keep, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, so I've gotten a couple things done. I definitely haven't been as productive as I hoped I would be, but that's okay. This is summer and even though it's not, the weather hasn't really acted like summer, <laughs> it's been pretty cool and rainy. We've had a couple of nice days but not hot, certainly not. We, we got our pool set ready to go and the water is so cold just because it's still getting down in the low 50s overnight and the daytime isn't warm enough to heat up, you know, the thousands of gallons of water and keep it there. So it's been a bit of a kind of a joke to have that pool open this year so far, but hopefully it's going to warm up a bit and um, then we'll be really happy for it. So what have I been working on? Well, I did a lot of cutting out. I haven't done so much sewing. I have done some, but not a whole lot. So one of the things that I cut out was this pattern here. This is some, uh, excuse me, mm -mm, not simplicity. McCall's M8202. And I am doing this view here. Am I? Am I though? Yeah, this view. And I lengthened it a little bit because I like my shirts coming a couple of inches down over right here. So I did lengthen it a little bit. Um, and I, this fabric that I cut it out in is really cute and fun. It's super soft. Like I think it's going to be really comfortable and lovely when the weather gets warmer. I haven't cut out the interfacing for that yet. Still need to do that. I'll do that very soon. Um, I also cut out this pattern. This is the Simplicity one, 9333. And I am doing view C so or D. <laughs> I know my alphabet. It's fine. So, oh, that's so weird. Is that C or D? Oh, it is C. Oh, man. I don't have my glasses on or my contacts then. So you can see how this is going to go. Um, and I've only had one cup of coffee. Um, somebody commented that this is going to be a bit tricky. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'll probably screw it up, but we're going to go for it anyway. Um, I've done harder stuff, but I've never done this. This is a first time for this style. There's like a little seam right in the middle, and I think that's going to help things so that hopefully the angles won't be as difficult to uh, achieve there, or at least it will hide some of the oopsies better. But I'm doing this out of the brown linen. It's, um, it's a linen blend. I have washed it. Can you tell? Huh? That's from cutting it out. And I don't think it lost much in the wash. And I did wash it on cold, gentle. It was a cold, gentle cycle. And I um, 
did put it through the gyre on a low setting. And I don't think it lost much. It does fray like the devil, but I'm going to have to um, zigzag the seams, I think, as I do them and make sure everything is, you know, tidied down. So the other thing I cut out was a quilt. Those take a while to do. And I am doing the Liberty Quilt from this book. I know this is silly because I make so many quilts, but I've never made a patriotic quilt. And for years I have been dying to. So when I saw this released several weeks ago, I was like, well, let's see. We just bought a cutter this year. We just had a graduation. We had a wedding. I probably don't need to buy another sewing book. Yeah, I did. I bought it. Um, and I also had to get the fabric because I realized I don't have any like real patriotic fabric. I didn't have enough blue and I didn't have enough red. They're just not that those colors are ones that I use a whole lot. So I did have to buy some fabric, which I did do. Now, here's the funny story. I bought the fabric online at, on Etsy because I like to support the small shops. Well, that was all fine. Good. The, the fabric that came in, hang on. So here's one of the blocks, right? that I've put together so far. Everything's all cut out. So isn't that pretty? These are all like batikis, batiks. <laughs> I like the batiki looking. I'm not sure if this one is really a batik. It looks just kind of speckled, but that's fine. I believe this one is, no, I don't think that one is either, but the, this one looks batik. And when I saw this one online, I was like, oh, I love that. It's got beautiful patriotic looking medallions bought it, got here. Everything was shipped so fast. I just love buying from Etsy because they always send a cute little note. One of the packages had a free little quilt pattern in it, um, which was really nice. I mean, there's only like a couple bucks at a quilt store, but it, you, they don't have to do that, but they do. Okay. And I absolutely love it. There was just one problem. This fabric, it's flannel. It's not just cotton. That was my mistake. I went back and looked at the order because I knew it was probably my mistake because I was in a hurry when I ordered it. And sure enough, it says in big bold letters, flannel. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I talked to a quilting group that I'm part of and everybody said, just use the flannel. It'll be fine. Mixed media and it can add some fun texture and whatnot. And honestly, I don't, I've sewn, you know, all these little pieces together and I'm about to do a huge stack of half square triangles. It doesn't seem to make any difference. I know my quilting machine, the Juki, isn't going to care about the difference thicknesses it's not going to make a difference so I got this for the backing and this I did purchase that when we were at Joanne's the, uh, the other day and I got this I love doing this with the binding stripes so the stripes are going to show this way so you're going to see this little bit see if I can do it it's just going to be a wee little bit of the binding that you're going to see. So it's going to like the binding is all striped. Now I don't need this much for the binding. It's not that big of a quilt, but I really like the fabric. So I got extra to have in my stash because I think I'm going to do another patriotic quilt. Um, I did buy some more patriotic fabric on patriotic fabric online. <laughs> Sorry. I can't talk this morning. And, uh, I got enough to do another quilt from the book, which I think I might do, um, Oh, I'm doing this one. Let me see if I can find the. So I'm doing this one right now. And I'm thinking the next one is either going to be this one or I really like the look of this one. I think that's kind of contemporary and cute looking. I also like that one, but I think it's going to either be this one or that one. This one I like, but I'm not into making it right now. And this one um, is cute as well, but I really have my eye either on this or this. So we'll see. We'll see. So that's what I'm doing. And um, sometime if you're interested in how I organize, I do, uh, when I do it from a book, I do it a little bit differently because I don't like to um, waste things. And I'll, I, if you're interested in that, I can show you my little method for that. It won't take long. Um, the other thing I've been working on, and this is why things have been so slow, is because I've just been in the mood to do some hand sewing. I know, weird. So what I'm doing is I'm making a bunch of English paper piece um, diamonds. And this is called a sprocket block. And I got this offline. Ooh, 
a long, long, I think it was 2015 when I started this. There's a long kind of sad story that goes, <laughs> it's funny, but it's kind of, it ends up sad. So I'm not going to tell it right now, but you piece, do your English paper piecing with these and then you put them together like this and then you make six of these then they go around a hexagon and they make like this really pretty sprocket um, design. The middle part is the same color as this. Let's see if I can get that. So all those going to go around this piece, which is the white color. It's a lot of work, but it's very relaxing. I typically take this project if I go to the lake for the day or camping. I did take it when we went camping, but I ended up doing absolutely no handwork. I just read and napped and that was what happened. <laughs> we did go for a couple bike rides and whatnot. And it just, it was definitely my week to regroup from a busy year, especially this spring. And, um, I needed it. And I tell you what, by the end of the week, I felt so much more energetic and better and just like my brain fog was disappearing and it was all good so i told my husband i said we should have camp for two weeks it's just never long enough so that's what i'm working on for now um i'm hoping to have the quilt top finished in uh by next friday so hopefully i'll be able to get show you finished quilt top and then i'm gonna knock out these blou blouses and get those done Especially since the pastel gingham one, I want to take on my next, wear for my next camping trip. So, all right. So I want to thank you for watching and I want to thank uh, Jen in today, today in uh, Jen's sewing room for creating the um, hashtag Friday Sews and the sewing community and um, letting us all participate in each other's lives and projects. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. I hope you find a way to be creative. And this is the Beehive Buzz buzzing off.